Warning, do not listen to this podcast if hearing about freedom and liberty is not legal for you in your community. And if so, you should immediately move to a hipper community. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Podcast, a weekly web lab where Michael W. Dean and Nima Vadadi cover the punk rockinist, hip hopinist current events, as well as timeless universal truths about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, because there's no such thing as half free. The Freedom Fiends Podcast, available from freedomfiends.com. That's F R E E D O M F E E N S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com, the Liberty Radio Network, and No Agenda Global Radio. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Distance Learning Anarchy Series with Freedom Fiends Michael W. Dean. Broadcasting from my windowless bunker. And Nima Vidati. Go, go, Freedom Fiends! Okay, count to four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Scott Wiener is a whore. Nima Fiend, Nima Fiend. Why is... M- Michael Dean. <laughs> why is Scott Wiener a whore? <laughs> Scott Wiener? I don't know if he's a whore. He's a goon, though. Uh, you sent me this story about how um, the city council in San Francisco is looking to ban public nudity, which you've talked That's about so on square. the cast before, how people yeah. in San Francisco can walk around nude. You get arrested for a gun, but you can't walk around showing your, your rifle. You're, you're right. Um, no, it's the other way around. <laughs> oh, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> you're Wiener. But the guy who doesn't want to see Wieners is named Scott Wiener. So maybe he got picked on too much as a kid. Uh, they called him a supervisor. Said They said the person who wrote the anti-nudity bill is named Scott Wiener. Uh, I was like, wow, that's hilarious. How do you spell his last name? W-I-E or E-I? Uh, it's actually not in the copy. The reporter left it out of the, oh, it's in the actual video. web copy. It's in the video, yeah. So Alyssa Newcomb apparently thought it would be too dirty for her fingers to type I found him. So, Demo- yeah, what, re- He's a Democratic Party politician currently serving in San Francisco Board of Supervisors, which is kind of like their city council. Yeah, what council. the hell is a Board of Supervisors? Because she says Supervisor Mike Wiener or Scott Wiener. Well, what you, know how, you know how now towns have they don't i mean they'll have a mayor but the mayor has no power and like they'll uh-huh. have a city manager it's kind of yeah. the equivalent of that i mean san francisco you know i mean being a city council member there is like as important and high level and is going to pta meetings or something no san francisco well like what he's doing i mean being on the board of supervisors of san francisco is like being the mayor of San Antonio. I mean, it's it's a real, you know, uh, think how much graft there is and, you know. Uh, yeah, that. <laughs> it's 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 probably got as much power almost as being I wouldn't say governor of Wyoming cuz there's so much minerals here to graft off of and I'm not saying our governor grafts, but you know, he's got to be pure and wonderful, but you know, all the people <laughs> that have been here through throughout history. I mean, think about uh-huh. that. I mean, think about like, you know, being the mayor of LA or New York or Houston is definitely a bigger position than being governor of some states. And mm-hmm. being the board of San Francisco Board of Supervisors, you have more power and influence than being definitely the mayor of like, you know, Cincinnati or something, but probably the governor yeah. of like you know, Rhode Island or Oregon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, guess, I guess when I when I saw the story though, it, it struck me as the main conflict that people never realize, and and this is the same conflict with things like banning dogs in downtown areas that I wrote a blog post about. Is the problem is there shouldn't be a in public, right? Because they they talk to you know uh, people, politicians, and man on the street people, and they're like, well, I don't they can do this in their own home or whatever. I don't think they should do it in public. Well, maybe there shouldn't be a public. Maybe if there weren't a public, you wouldn't have these kinds of political fights over things like whether or not wieners are swinging and boobs are flopping. People can't picture how that would work. They picture they'd be trapped in their house and have to, like, leap hot lava style to the store, <laughs> you know? The road is lava. The road is lava. Can't touch yeah. it. I'll have to pay money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, I don't think it would work that way at all. No, no. I mean, th- think about it this way. 
uh, all of Disneyland is not public property, right? Uh, and all of Disneyland, you walk on it. There's roads in Disneyland. You walk from ride to ride. There's businesses. There's places you can go eat. Uh, you walk around Disneyland. It's like walking in the downtown of any city, but a lot more fun. Uh, and that's not public. Ben Stone pointed out recently, like people can't picture how private roads would work. A parking lot is a private wor- road, and ah, some parking lots go. cost a lot of money. Some cost a little money, and a lot mm-hmm. of them are free. You know, if you're down in that area doing something yeah. they want you there for. Yeah, no, but they, I mean, usually when you go to like a big strip mall or something, you don't have to pay an attendant when you get in, unless it's like a town or city where parking's really scarce. But usually, like you San know, Francisco, who intentionally that city for decades has intentionally not put in extra parking spaces or allowed private, you know, parking garages. So they could use tickets as revenue. They have on, on any given business day between nine and five, there are 75,000 more cars in San Francisco mm-hmm. than, than there are legal parking spots. They've set it up to gank you just by going there. Yep. Not many yep. people. I mean, you know, in LA, every, every like starving artist has a car. In San Francisco, you have to be almost rich to own a car. I mean, a, a place to park it costs more than an apartment some, sometimes. Yikes. And Yikes. I used to spend, when I had a van for a band, I would spend 20 to 30 minutes looking for parking sometimes within five blocks walk of my house. Mm-hmm. In L.A., you know, I lived in a kind of crappy neighborhood. There was always parking on my block. I mean, it's so spread out. And, and they, you know, not that LA is a libertarian paradise, but San Francisco is set <laughs> up to gank means. you, man. The only place worse is like New York City in America. Well, uh, on UT campus, when I first went to college, it was like that. Uh, in fact, that was one of the first stories I ever wrote when I was doing my young journalism program. Um, parking sucks by Nima Vidati. Well, no, <laughs> I, I went and talked to the parking officials and tried to figure out the numbers. And it was exactly that. There were... There were 7,000 spaces on campus, but each year they issue around 70,000 parking permits for those spaces. So it's, ten, it's a 10 to 1 kind of thing. There's uh, you know, 10% parking for, uh, for that, for the amount of people that there are. So um, literally you'd walk by uh, people going to the parking lot and people would drive around 30 minutes. What I would do eventually is I would drive uh, you know, up and down the roads and look for people who looked like they were walking back towards the parking lot, and I'd pick them up. I'd say, hey, I'll give you a ride to your car if you let me take your spot. Uh, yeah. So you could be you'd be creative, but yeah, it was it wasn't yeah parking sucks. Let's talk about it. It was it was hey look at this. There's you know seven thousand spaces, seventy thousand people with who paid a hundred dollars a semester to park in these spaces. How the hell is that going to work? Because it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. are so square. You know, basically what this thing comes down to. I'll say it, and then we can move on. Uh, they want to charge you money to be naked in San Francisco. Ah, <laughs> I mean, did you see it? the thing? Yeah, it said yeah. that like the bill uh, find a hundred dollars. Ex- no, but the exception would be for parades with a city permit. Because uh, San Francisco, you got to uh, be able to be naked uh, or really scantily clad in the in the Gay Day Parade and the Gay Pride <laughs> Parade and the you know. And I'm sure they wouldn't give you a permit for like the you know kinky BDSM gun owners parade. So, <laughs> so they want to okay. control the nudity control and it. make mm-hmm. money off of it. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and, you know, I would imagine they're probably losing income for, you know, city tourism over it. I mean, you know, I, I mean, a lot of weird people go to San Francisco who'd be like, cool. First of all, though, in my experience around nudists, and I lived in San Francisco 16 years, and there's always been <clears throat> people trying to do this and people doing it privately and people doing it in clubs. It's a naked city. Um, but in my experience, the people that like to get naked the most are the people you least want to see naked. Why is that? And everybody always says that anecdotally. Mm-hmm. And I went to a nude beach, and yeah, it was, was kind of like that. There were a few hotter chicks, but it's, uh, you it's, know. it's different in Europe where everybody can is do it. it. Um, yeah. yeah, like in yeah. Europe, a lot of parks and beaches are nude. Uh, you know, like city parks in Germany. They, they were when I was there last. Maybe they're not now. But uh, I why guess the is thing that? is to, ha- to have the the confidence to be nude all the time you have had to shed all your body issues that you may have had so you have to just not care is that yeah it? and you know you'd think like young people would be more like i don't care what anyone thinks but young people tend to really care what people think and by the yeah. time you get middle age you kind of like i don't care what people think i, I'm gonna I know get who naked i am feed i got squirrels. a belly. i don't care yeah i mean you know that you know they're like the i didn't come out as kinky 
in my own mind really until I was middle aged or you know thirty something. Uh, I mean, I had inklings of it, but before that, going back to childhood. But it's like a lot of people are like that too. A lot of people like discover BDSM relationships, you know, after their failed marriage, when they're middle aged, when the kids are gone to college. They go like, "F it, man, I can do what I want." Blurg, blurg. <laughs> That's good though. It's good. It's good to have that that youthful spirit even when you're old. Um, but I guess how you like stay up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hang on a sec. This is the central scrutinizer. We're working very hard to spend your tax money to keep you from hearing things like freedomfiends.com. That's why we're very upset about freedomfiends.cz. Freedomfiends.cz is a Liberty Media Archive of Freedom Fiends material hosted in the Czech Republic. Freedomfiends.cz is outside the jurisdiction of the Watchers who employ me, the central scrutinizer, to keep you from hearing things that might make you think. My fellow scrutinizers and I do not want you to visit freedomfiends.cz. Do not visit freedomfiends.cz. Hi, I'm Michael Dean from The Freedom Fiends, and like you, I'm concerned with privacy on the internet. The electronic police state is strangling our previous protections, and the central scrutinizer is trying to squint into all areas of our lives. That's why smart people surf the net with a VPN or virtual private network. I use a VPN from Bola VPN. Bola VPN has your utmost security in mind and will allow you to surf, email, and do other computing tasks without leaving a trail of breadcrumbs across the internet. Unlike many other VPN providers, Bola VPN doesn't log traffic. With Bola VPN, you can change your apparent location or disappear completely. Bola VPN has been around since 2007, which is OG in the VPN world. Bola VPN is easy to install and configure. Best of all, it can be had for less than 25 cents a day, which is a small price to pay for this much security. And if you open a support ticket saying you heard about them through the Freedom Fiends, they'll add three extra days free. That's Bola VPN at B O L E H V P N dot net. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyper speed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures made with genetically engineered features. And corporate villains crave the opportunity to steal a profit from others' ingenuity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. Right. So we started yeah. at the beginning of this saying that somebody was square or something. Who was it? What? Huh? Oh yeah. Um, Senate bill rewrite. Uh, let's no, no, feds- no. You just said you just opened like before we're, when we were sound checking. You're like so and so is a blah blah blah. Oh, Scott Weiner. Yeah. So you know, I was thinking, um, and also I wanted to say I listened to the last cast. It was really good. There were a couple times where I was like, you know, and you were like, "Where'd you go? Where'd you go?" This new mic has a really tight pattern. It's a super cardioid. The um the ah, uh-huh. Sure Beta S uh Sure Beta fifty seven A. Yeah, so it's like, you know, even if I go just a few inches over, it's like yeah. Yep, yep. But although I so, guess it's really good for live uh sound. You that's know, the point. On stage, yeah. It doesn't you feedback to, as much. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And you don't want to hear the person next to you. But I like it. It just kinda locks me in one place more, which I don't like so much. But it's a really mm-hmm. cool mic and I really yeah. like the sound of it. I really like uh, standing up by the mic now. I've done this this the third or fourth time I've been doing it uh, with the dynamic mic. I stand up in my little you know closet office windowless bunker and uh, I just spit to the mic and uh, I'll do that cool. too. I'm standing makes, up. All right, yeah, yeah. I'm swaying. Makes, makes you feel makes you feel in the groove, you know. Uh, and and people do that. So uh, so I was, I was wondering like what the what you know. Let's segue into this next thing about the Senate bill. I want to talk about free speech. I was reading that the um, Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, helped with a lawsuit where some some like you know some patriot guard the border militia minutemen keep out the brown people 
<laughs> constitutionalist types, so-called, con- mm-hmm. you know, those guys. The guys yeah. that eventually like mellow out and become Fiends fans or – you read about them on the evening news. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to say that. I don't want to say that. But we know who you mean. You can go. They on. wrote some pamphlet about some pro-immigration lady and called her like a Korean. What they call her? It was a pamphlet called like she's a Korean, you know, apologist, na- nanny slut, or something like that. Mm. They got successfully sued for defamation over that, and it was reported in the mm. Southern Poverty Law Center site. I'm assuming they helped with the legal wrangling, but mm. really, you can get like. I mean, we we do crap like that all the time. No, we don't. But you know, we call people idiots and stuff. But and I don't want to yeah. soften. But no, I don't either. I don't you know. Either. I mean, is that is that where the world we're in? I hope not. I hope not. Uh, I mean, that's one of the reasons I've always loved hip hop, and I use hip hop is because you know that that's sort of on the front lines of battling for being able to say Mitt Romney can suck a dizzick and whatever a dizzick. You know, cause, <laughs> and you're yeah. like, you, Your Honor, define dizzick. What is a dizzick? <laughs> it's not. All right, so read about this new square Senate bill. I'll be right back. I got to deal with a cat issue. Ah, cat issue. Okay. So, yeah, um, Michael said this to me, and I just said gross. Uh, and he, of course, said it's so square. So, you know where it comes from. But um, so the Senate had this bill. Originally, it was supposed to increase Americans' email privacy, which, uh, as a side note, uh, did you really think the Senate would ever successfully do something like that? No. Uh, law enforcement apparently complained about the bill, uh, saying, you know, it didn't go too far enough, uh, in the words of Jack Johnson. Uh, now the bill has has gotten so bad that it actually has increased government access to email and other digital files um so much so that just about any uh at 22 agencies there you go uh 22 agencies including the SEC the FCC Federal Communications Commission Security Exchange Commission can access uh just about anybody's email Google document files Facebook wall posts Twitter messages uh no search warrant um I guess, I guess with Facebook and Twitter, you know, you're putting it in public anyway, but, uh, email and, and Google Docs. I mean, Google Docs is, is just sort of a space. It's like web space where you put documents that are yours. Um, and apparently, uh, the bill wants to give power for anybody to look at these. Um, and I guess even with Facebook and Twitter, right? I mean, somebody has to follow you first, you, uh, on Twitter and somebody has to, friend you have to accept their friend request on facebook otherwise they can't get past various privacy things for you um but not now uh yeah. if you're if you're part of these government goons uh, of course it, it hasn't passed yet but uh but man how it square will. is that it will you think it will I, and democrats you used to be cool democrats what happened did to you they, did they, no, I don't know they, they didn't ever were. They they didn't. but i thought they were you used to I think was, they were cool. i know <laughs> but but i mean I think you're right. It probably will pass because it is the Senate. I don't know if it's as guaranteed to also pass in the House, uh, although it wouldn't surprise uh, me. Oh, the Republicans are passing stuff like that. That's the only place everyone's reaching across the aisle in a big reach around bipartisan circle jerk. Reach is, around, yeah. <laughs> is in taking rights, you know? Uh, I mean, they'll yeah, battle yeah. them on. They'll battle them on. We need to trim one million dollars from this trillion dollar deficit by taking away things we're not into, like birth yeah. control. Yeah. You know, well, that's where they say there's grid. There's no gridlock. There's they're they're both in a steamroller, hugging each other and and sharing <laughs> beers and and high fiving while they roll over yeah, rights. Yeah. Well, well, some people are like, well, you know, uh, when you say things like the state is just thieves and murderers, uh, you're not you're not showing all the things. You don't show any of the good things that that government can do right by their people. But this is just a perfect example of okay, so fine. The Senate decides to do something that on its face seems like it could be good, right? Uh, bolstering email privacy. Although you know, I don't buy that line. But if you know, even if you did buy that line, they try to do this. Law enforcement cries like little babies that they are, uh, and the Senate just rolls over and writes it com- completely defeating the, the original purpose and making it instead I know uh, something that law enforcement can just look at any email you write ever I know it's kind of a you know they always do this 1984 stuff like the Patriot Act is the most ridiculously named act I call it the yeah. act for spying on and jailing Patriots but uh, <laughs> you know this is even more 1984 ish it's like they go into session to do a bill to protect privacy and freedom on the internet and they come out with something that does the opposite that rapes you over yeah. the pool table yeah yeah over the pool table <laughs> yeah and uh and then forwards the raping video to all of their friends you know i don't even look anymore to see if there's an r or a d after these people's name 
It, it's not. It should just be a T it's for tyrant. Yeah. T for tyrant. Yeah. I was going to say F for fascist. Yeah. Either works. And, you know, a lot of these people get voted in because of single issue crap. Like, uh, you know, oh, well, this guy's really good on gun rights. He wants to spy on everything you do and have lists of uh, <laughs> lists of all the guns you own. And, you know, like basically they're like, we don't need you don't need to register guns anymore. We know what you have. You talked about it on the Internet. <laughs> um, I need to get someone to do a good post on doing encrypted email for our uh, fiends blog so if any of the bloggers are listening and can write that let me know and i'm going to write one on using pigeon which is the encrypted uh the pigeon troll uh, the pigeon omatic it's what nima and yeah. i use for off the record encrypted email and i just sent nima a uh, link which you should mm-hmm. look at eventually you respond and then look at this link it's more about like democrats you used to be cool and it's about spying, so check it out. <laughs> well, okay, I, I'm going to respond first uh, and say that um, use Pigeon for, for private conversations. Pigeon is great, like you said. About email encryption, though, I mean, there are some things with which Gmail and, and your Yahoo and your, your basic ones just work better. Um, but if you want it to be private, No, they don't I would work better. Pigeon. They're easier to set up. Pigeon works just as well as any of those other ones, but uh, uh, well, see the thing uh, work better for certain things, right? The thing I like about my Gmail, uh, which is also a detriment if you're talking about spying on me, but uh, it's a benefit for things that I don't care about if the government knows. Um, is is I I don't delete any Gmail emails. It's it's always backed up there, no matter what. Without me, if I if I'm lazy and and don't save it, you know, personally, it's already there. Yes, um, for Senator Patrick Leahy to read. Sure, but and Google uh, is specifically in this bill. It's like you know, we need to be yeah. able to check your Gmail, your Gmail, your your well, your you know. Google Docs too, which uh, I guess who I said the while hell? You were gone. Why are people into this cloud computing thing? Okay, cloud computing can mean two things. One is good, and one's not. One is distributed, redundant web servering for websites mm-hmm. and services, which, which is right. great, and it's can like increase resources to so. increase resources and lower price of startup and have it scalable. Like I've said before. Yeah. When I was working in the dot com boom in San Francisco, making thirty five dollars an hour with my feet up on the desk wearing shorts, um, you know, doing like editorial ed- editing documents basically for <laughs> a bunch of web startups that uh, uh-huh. don't exist anymore, um, you know, like order order a hundred pounds of dog food with one click delivered within hours, <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, that'll work. Um, to every company I worked in had a server room. I mean, they had like you know a room locked refrigerated with like all these servers that cost a lot of money to maintain that had high security that stored everyone's credit card number on them. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally like one of the guys told me, you know, if somebody walked out of here with one of those servers, which they could carry, it would be worth a million dollars, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But now you don't have to do that. Now you hire like Amazon or some other company that does cloud distributed, uh, it's basically like you used to when you started a factory in the 1900s. You had to have generators on the premises, and now and it's then, on the grid. And now it's on the grid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's like now yeah. if you want to start an internet startup, you you use cloud computing. You hire someone mm-hmm. else to do it, and it's scalable. Like if you go from a thousand hits a day to ten million hits a day, you don't right. have to buy a bunch of new servers. They do it automatically yep. and just bill you yep. for the extra stuff, and then go back yep. down to billing you with the old ones. So that's cloud computing one. Cloud computing two is not good unlike the first kind cloud computing too is this push by google and other companies that do the other kind of cloud computing to where you don't store your data on your end you store it on their end which is just i have so many problems with that one is any they can read it even if it's encrypted even if they say no one can read it they're going to let law enforcement read it without a warrant and with this mm-hmm. bill they won't need a warrant yeah um yeah. you know if this bill I, I goes think it's still law. useful though it's useful if it's I don't know if it's a term paper for a class. I don't care if they read it. If it's something for certain things. But I think the most important concept to remember is is be aware of these things. That doesn't mean you don't have to use cloud computing yeah. if it's useful to you. It means don't write your communist manifesto or your anarchist manifesto and put it on Google Docs. Uh, don't, don't do any personal information or banking information or, uh, you know, an itinerary of, of your travel plans or, you know, well, some I kind don't of even, I don't invoice. want them to, I don't want, you know, I don't want some government goon hired off a pizza box, uh, to even read like, you know, my love notes between me and my wife. We send each other every morning. Oh, that too. Yeah, that too. 
you know, um, f those people. I mean, here's here's a bad business plan. Like for instance, Google uh, has come out with a computer. It's a really cheap laptop that runs on yep. Linux that has no Chromebook. hard drive. Has mm-hmm. no hard drive. Google yeah. is your hard drive. Like literally, yeah. it's made for people who have no problem with everything that they ever produce or write or surf being stored remotely. Yeah, in the benevolent hands of Google, who well, are going to be it, the first people targeted with this bill. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's it should be called. It's, it's, it's for sh- the opposite of power users, man. It's it's it for should your be called the old lady. It should be called the Leahy book. The Leahy <laughs> after Patrick Leahy. Um, no, well, uh-huh. it's not for old ladies. It's not that easy to use. It's Linux. I mean, it's easy to use, but it's like that is not for old ladies. That is for tech people. I mean, look at the reviews of the Chromebook. It's not. It's not. This is a perfect thing to buy for grandma. It's. Really? I've been in Linux into Linux since 1.0, and this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And it weighs mm-hmm. less than a regular laptop, and I can take it anywhere. And it's powered on unicorn tears. <laughs> I thought it was all you do is you open it up and you click on the Google Chrome thing, and you're on the web, and it's it's basically like a glorified smartphone <clears throat> kind of thing. It's a glorified smartphone with no hard drive and if you want to store docs they store on google doc server on the other Mm -hmm. end Mm -hmm. and the applications i don't like applications as a service it's basically you pay or have a service where i mean you don't have microsoft word you have google word or whatever and Mm -hmm. the the program isn't even stored on your computer which is slower and weird and they know everything you're doing you know yeah yeah Oh, the squirrels are married today. You know, a lot of people thought that that line is the squirrels are married in Office Space, and the squirrels were married. What Office Space line are you talking about? Uh, Milton Waddams, the guy played by, oh, you know, yeah, the, guy, yeah. the guy who says, and they took my swing line stapler, the yes, guy who burns something there. down at the end. Um, Get a bird down the building. Yeah. yeah. That guy's awesome. He says, I used to have a window. I used to have an office, but I used to have a desk by the window, and I could look out at the window, and the squirrels were merry. And I checked the script. It's merry. They were happy. They were playing. Uh, I always thought it was married, too. Really? Like, they, a like lot it of was people gay, think that. Squirrel marriage. Like he's yeah, that well, crazy? No, he's not that crazy. He's violent I want crazy. Him to be, I, wa- not... I want him to be that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it makes him funnier. Um, I don't yeah. know. I, I guess that's the beauty of movies. Is uh, in my mind, it it will always be married, and I will keep it that way, even though you're right. So Democrats push to redeploy Obama's voter ba- data voter database. Look at this ah, article. Uh-huh, it's basically uh-huh. if you voted for the president, he's spying on you and knows where you live, what magazines you subscribe to. He knows your car registration, housing value, hunting licenses, along with yeah. scores yep. estimating how likely you are to cast ballots for his reelection. Wait, mm-hmm. he's already been reelected. So third term? Mm, no, it's probably an old article. Uh, no, it came out today, man. So oh, it says updated today. But, you know, they'll use it for everything else, too, to see, like, what can we, get, you know, for yeah, whatever clone Yeah, regardless runs. of when the article's written. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just a good example of how uh, both political parties, uh, you know, obviously the Democrats are a lot more sex- successful at it. Um, they don't really care about public good or anything. They, they just care about marketing. And uh, they're no different than, than Pepsi or Coke in trying to figure out how to get you to, to buy their what they're selling. Uh, and what they're selling is BS. Um but uh, unfortunately, people fall for it, man. People fall for it. Uh, it's, it's like Scott Horton's fond of saying uh, during the first Obama campaign when he wanted to be president, um, they had this thing where they, they, they always said, we're expecting record turnout, right? So uh, that was the line that they wanted everybody to parrot because uh, they, they did research and they figured out it's kind of a bandwagon effect, right? So I'll go out and let's say we expect record turnout uh, and then we will have sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy towards it. So it, it's it's very cynical in the way they, they try to manipulate people's minds into doing this. And uh, and it's just a great way to show people, hey, these folks that want to rule you, they don't have public good in their mind. They just have power and they play you like a fiddle by scratching your crazy cat spots so that you'll willingly give them the power they seek. And if you don't know what crazy cat spot is, go to Freedom Fiends and click on the link at the top that says glossary. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Listen to old school fiends. If you listen to us and are like, what the hell or turned off, uh, you know, but but still kind of interested, go back and listen to old school fiends. My wife was trying to tell me the other day, you know, sometimes you guys are just like 
on completely different chapters, and, and I feel like you might turn off people who are new listeners. Um, what What do you mean? Like we're we're too advanced and assuming everyone yeah, knows well, what we're well, you're, talking you're about? All, you're, yeah, you're always like, well, we're done with you know libertarian kindergarten. We're, we're not there anymore. We're, we're sick of explaining these basic uh, anarchy 101 kind of things. It's, that's a good point. Um, although I think that we do kind of cover that with a couple ways. One is we off we very often when we're talking about the theory that uh, <clears throat> all law, or the the fact that all laws and taxes are enforced at the barrel of a gun. I will often say, Nima, explain that for people who might be new listeners. Yeah. We do that like every five or ten casts. Um, we do. Also, there's a link. On the Freedom Fiends blog, if you go to freedomfiends.com and click on the cat link over on the right, it says blog. Uh, one of the, the page links at the top that's easy to find is it says resources for those new to liberty. So I'd really recommend that mm -hmm. for anybody who doesn't really get everything we're saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, but still, I think I think if you know some of the old episodes are great, and, and I'm just saying if, if you're new, try, try listening to some of the old school episodes, you know, uh, episodes – 10 through 90 or something like that. 10 through um, 60. Uh, it, here's the kind of progression, the differences between them. Okay, episode 1 through 10, I was still a minarchist and Nima was a full-on anarchist. And you can watch me go from, well, there should be some government to full-on peaceful yeah. anarcho-capitalist. Um, <laughs> right. Then episodes 10 through 60 or so or 65, first of all, there's no cussing in any of them. So if you want to play them on the, you know, your college radio station or something, those have no cussing. It's all edited yeah. out. Or um, in your Christian science reading room or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And we were kind of, we were kind of like, they're great episodes, but um, we really came into our own after about episode 65 or 70. I mean, that's when mm. we really got to what we are now, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Speaking of minarchy and anarchy, did you see this um, this thing about the Free State Project in New Hampshire? Uh, ah, uh -huh. the, the the okay, they have like three hundred state reps there. It's got the <clears throat> of it's the largest legislative body in the world, except for like U.S. Congress and I think the U.K. Parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, the New Hampshire state reps for for a fairly small population. Yeah, so I mean, I think each each, each rep has like five constituents no it's not like that <laughs> in wyoming each rep in wyoming wyoming has less people and has like 90 reps total to senate and you know both houses uh and it's something like six or eight thousand constituents per rep but it's mm -hmm. a lower number than that even in new hampshire right. but it's not nothing i mean it's you know they are politicians and they are paid by the state really low like 300 bucks a year or something but Two guys ran for the one seat in, I think it was Manchester, for state rep. They were roommates. They were both free state guys. <laughs> one was a minarchist and one was an anarchist. Yeah. And one, the minarchist ran as a Republican and the anarchist ran as a Democrat. And I think they were unopposed. And and in their debate, like the minute the anarchist was screaming at the minarchist, calling him a statist. The statist, yeah, and he and the, lost. And the, the anarchist won. Lost. So there is a full-on anarchist state rep. At least one in yeah. New Hampshire. Yeah. And somebody well, said, so I really like this. Somebody said, you know, I'm looking forward to when that's the debate in America is minarchist versus anarchist. Wouldn't that be uh, awesome? That would be beautiful. That would be yeah. beautiful. And I'm trying, that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to push that to where that's the debate because uh, these silly debates between left and right, Republican and Democrat, they're, they're silly. There's not real debates, man. It's just talking about uh, arranging the deck chairs on the Titanic, to use the old cliche. Um, yeah. But the thing is, though, can you really be an anarchist and and, and run for office? Yeah, run. Well, for Well, yeah, campaign, I would man. see if I'd been the if I'd been the minarchist in that debate when he I, screamed. I, I'd, be, and, I'd be like, well, well, he's a liar because yeah, he says he's yeah. an anarchist, but he he's says running I'm for a, office. He's calling me a statist, but he's running for office. Although I would say. <clears throat> I don't know. I would say Vermin Supreme is a true anarchist and is running for office constantly, but I think he doesn't expect to win right, and right. Uh, it's theater. But I, I think these guys knew one of them was going to win. I just love that. Two roommates running against each other unopposed. <laughs> I think they were unopposed. Uh, but, yeah. uh, well, one of them won, so... So I'm vaping a new kind of uh, nicotine substitute. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you were telling me. I'm, uh, I'm trying to pretty much... 
quit the nicotine and the the THC at the same time right now. That's I think that's bad. one of the reasons I got so hot headed at the Facebook because ah! I'm usually so mellow and You're I'm going usually through like weed, status, weed and nicotine what, withdrawal, whatever status, whatever. And I was like, why you no agree with me, status? You know, because I didn't have the the there usual you, oil and and coolant fluid that yeah, I keep there to run go. my body <laughs> was, was empty. Hang on a sec. Uh, let's go sell some stuff and come back, and then we'll talk about that more. All right. Go, go, freedom fiends. Freedom fiends. Helping the helpless. Freedom fiends. Saving the universe. Freedom fiends. Doing the things that I've Taking the world from the state. Fighting the forces of hate. You're listening to the Freedom Fiends podcast. Freedom Fiends is now available for 24-7 streaming to your iPhone, Android phone, or other chromed robot turd. Click on the streaming audio link on freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. Did your world collapse when Ron Paul didn't win? Don't keep hoping for some great man to fix government through government. Complete your evolution today to full-on anarcho-capitalist. Reward your brain with the freedom fiends and quit breaking your heart with some politician. While the libertarians argue, But who would build the roads? The freedom fiends have already built the roads and moved on to making the great media content of the libertarian paradise. Freedomfiends.com That's freedomfiends.com so I'm back, Nima, from cleaning up a nicotine spill. Oh, uh, nicotine spill. That's not good. Yeah. Now, people will be like, what? Like you dropped your, your pouch of pipe tobacco? But no. No. no it's uh, I'm buying like 24 milligram per milliliter uh, like pure nicotine unflavored liquid now and putting it into mm. uh, into blank cardamizers and um, yeah. vaping it. And it's kind of like Vape that crack. Shit. No, it's not crack. But it's like, <laughs> I like doing it while we cast because I don't like smoking while we cast because it makes all my mic stink like forever. Yeah. yeah. Like, Nikki Darling said like, that's one reason she quit smoking and started vaping only. She's like, even my dog smelled like cigarettes. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, man. Uh, I don't know. I, I really feel like that. Like, why not just get rid of the smoke altogether if you're still into nicotine? Although... There is something to be said about just straight up hot smoke to your lungs. Sometimes you need that, but I've been trying to to, to stop pretty much completely. It's I still bomb true. cigarettes every now and then, yeah. but I'm I'm trying to reduce my dependence on on. Nicotine. I hate people that just bomb other people's cigarettes. That's not a way to quit, man. Why? I don't know. Because then they bomb. But uh, well, yeah. I always offer a dollar. I'm usually like, hey, I'll buy a dollar. A I used to offer a dollar. nickel back when I used to do that in the '90s, but that's about well, right. Uh, it, it depends on where you're at. Like in Washington State, packs are almost ten bucks now. So really, you know, a pack is twenty. Yeah, a pack they're is like twenty five, cigarettes. They're like five bucks in Wyoming. Yep, and yep. that's they're like uh, five bucks in Texas too. So that's what like twenty five cent. Uh, yeah, if, if it's but, about five bucks, if it's ten bucks, it's about fifty cent. You know, a, but if you're using if you're using pre filled cardamizers like we were with Vapor Smiths, uh, who we don't use anymore, but um, if if uh, if you're using that kind of way of doing it, where you get the pre-filled cardamizers for the vaporizer, little battery thing, um, uh-huh. it's really that's cheap. about two thirds of the price of smoking cigarettes in Wyoming. So you know it's about three bucks for the equivalent of a pack. Uh-huh. Um, if you're doing the refilling, it's like a dollar fifty per pack equivalent. But mm. the stuff is really really toxic. You have to like make sure you don't leave it where cats can get it. You have to wipe it up. You have to wash your hands. Once yeah. it's in the little cardamizer thing, it's fine. But what just happened when we had to do, when I had to have an emergency break was um, I was twisting the battery or the cardamizer onto one of these. And I, tw- I wasn't looking, I was staring out the window at the squirrels being married, <laughs> married, married. <laughs> and I like Those twisted it too far. Man. I broke it. And there was like, like I could mm. smell the nicotine in the whole room and it was kind of on my hands mm. and, I had mm. to clean it up because I didn't want it in my hands where <laughs> I might pet a cat or something, you know, because they'll lick anything off. They're cleanliness yeah. freaks. So, yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I don't think I'd do this if I had kids. Uh, you know, if I had like, you'd be children. worried about the kids getting into them. Yeah, I mean, mm. I hate to say it, but cats are more replaceable than kids. And don't think I'm a bad cat parent. There's no way a cat's going to get any of this nicotine in it. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, well, it's it's a lot harder to make a kid or uh, or adopt a kid than it is to get a new cat. So it's easy to make a kid. <laughs> It's hard to raise a kid. And well, kids, you know, no, it's and easy humans, to conceive you know. a kid, but it takes like nine months and being healthy to actually make the kid. And cats are kitten factories. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so see, see, yeah, maybe, maybe doing it shouldn't be make a baby because really you just start the baby. Like, I don't know. Uh, it takes like nine months to actually make it, right? It's not a baby until it pops up. <laughs> yeah. It's still a fetus until then. Fetus, fetus. Oh, so a that's fetus. it. That's it. I'm, I'm not gonna make a. We're not gonna make a baby tonight. We're gonna make a fetus. Hey, baby, I want to make a fetus with <laughs> I you. Make a fetus with you. <laughs> put on some, put on some Barry White and make a fetus. <laughs> uh, fetus making music, baby. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so. baby, when I see you in that dress, I want to make a fetus with you. <laughs> baby, let's make a fetus tonight. That was horrible and weird. Um, but hilarious. So, yeah. so the uh, today's episode is called I'm a Political Atheist. Which has nothing to do with fetuses or nicotine. No, and I'm not an atheist <laughs> with God. I'm one of those like, yeah, whatever, deist types. Um, political atheist. I think that's a good term. Better than anarchist. Uh, why better than anarchist? And I it's like not, anarchist. We didn't make it up. I actually came up with it and thought I came up with it. And then I went on that thing on the internet that has... Oh, the thing. Yeah. The thing. <laughs> Urban call it. Dictionary. Urban that Dictionary. I couldn't think of the other, the other episode. I was like, and the they, thing. You know, mm. that thing with definitions. What the hell is that called? And they have a, de they have a, a definition for it that's pretty pretty accurate if you want to read it. And uh, here, I'll send it to you on the Pigeon Trolla, and you can uh, look it up. Why do, you, why do you call it the Pigeon Trolla? Because <laughs> that's that what Mr. Burns like, would call oh. it. He's like, uh, he's like uh. Smithers, we just received a fax trolla. I don't know because okay. probably be, I think it was like the first um, phonograph machine was called like the music controller or something, you know, like mm -hmm. Edison's like 1905 invention, something mm -hmm. a trolla. Victrola. It was the Victrola was the an early record player. That, that, I think that was the suffix for technology. Yeah. Then. It was like, you know, and then in the I, 80s it was Tron and now it's I. I this yeah, and now I it's that. I as a prefix, okay, yeah. or E. All yeah. right, so uh, I political atheist to Tron, a person or persons who has a disbelief in the ruling of a dominating government with morals of any kind. Those who have belief that not everything produced by politics or the media hold truth of any kind. He slash she who holds their own belief in what is wrong or right, not based on what is fed to them by what the general public allows themselves to be brainwashed with. So See, I don't here's think the that definition. really. Yeah, I don't you think that really goes far enough. That to me sounds like political independent who doesn't trust the mainstream media. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't that's sound why, like an anarchist. That, yeah, that's why I didn't really cotton to the idea of using that instead of what we generally use. Um, because I think it does have, for me, uh, a connotation of just an independent, you know, like Lou Dobbs kind of stuff. Like Lou Dobbs will, will make fun of Democrats and Republicans and be like, oh, they're both horrible. And then he'll be like, let's build a fence on the border. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, you're yeah. not a liber you're, you're not into liberty just because you hate the Democrats and Republicans. You can you can also uh, uh, you know follow a third way that's just as tyrannical. Rush Limbaugh has like hated both parties at different times or hated what they're doing. I yeah. mean, there's a there's a, a pretty accurate like parody of him on The Simpsons where where there's a guy named I forget the character's name, but it's like right he looks and sounds like Rush Limbaugh and has a name kind of like that. Uh. And I thought it was like Limbaugh, like a sheep, like bah. Maybe that, that's easy to remember. But uh, you know, I he he's saying something on the radio like these taxocrats and Repu republicrats and Texas. Mm -hmm. He has these like two portamoos for Republican and Democrat mm -hmm. that both kind of sound like they're evil and want to steal everything. And that's mm -hmm. kind of I've heard him talk like that before. Although he tends more towards the Republican, he just he just thinks anyone who isn't agreeing with him as a Republican is a rhino yeah, Republican yeah. in name only, but yeah, but, but he probably also would want the death penalty for anybody who even utters the words tranny hooker and crocodile. So yeah. 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 So, so, so you know, yeah, he I've, uses, he uses a dynamic mic. We use dynamic mics. Now we got, we've, <laughs> we've grown past the, uh, although you could probably still use your ribbon, but it's up to you, but I don't think condensers are ever for uh, podcasting anymore. 
Yeah, I like the dynamic. Uh, the ribbon probably sounds better, but the dynamic's easier to use. And with the dynamic, I can just keep it on the stand. I don't have to worry it's about it. To I, it's easier to use in that it doesn't require mic technique as much as the as, ribbon. As much. And, and yeah, I can clean As much as the in. ribbon, yes. The, rib, the ribbon mic, I'm, I'm always scared that I'm going to hurt its delicate little ribbon. Yeah. And I don't want to do that. Yeah, whereas like dynamic mics, you know, people use them on stage and swing them around and hit their drummer in the face with them. And, yeah. They still work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Gigi but, uh, Allen would stick them up his butt and they still work. Uh, was that for a specific sound he was trying to achieve? or No, it was just theater. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I found out who it was in my hometown of Westfield, New York, who was touring us, and I've been chatting with the uh, guy. Ah, okay. I don't want to say his name. I didn't get permission to say it yet, but uh, it's really cool. He's a guy who's you know, a little younger than me. He's early 40s. Um, and he says he's the only Liberty person he knows in that county. And mm. he... Uh, he first he his progression was like so many people man he said he uh he was listening to alex jones and then alex jones is on the gnc network and so is free talk live so he heard i think he it's went, gcn gcn yeah so he listened to free talk live and they mentioned the freedom fiends and he checked us out and that's uh, how he found us so ah, i didn't know about that progression i knew the alex jones to something to us is common, but uh, I thought that's I, the one you always said. I thought you always say Alex Jones to free talk right, live but I didn't things. get the connection of GNC of how that's someone uh, GCN uh, how that might be uh, so how someone would find uh, us. I mean, okay. that's why the one time like Alex Jones had a crossed wire somewhere and was like interrupting our our live oh, Sunday yeah. show on the mm -hmm. LRN you know free talk lives yeah. network thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex Jones. Uh, but back to the terms, uh, political atheist. I'm glad you brought it up, but. Uh, Mostly because it, do, it doesn't work, man. It yeah, I don't work. think I don't think it works because it doesn't. Yeah. It's it's a good term, and I yeah. think it's it's like a Venn diagram thing. Like I would say, we probably are political atheists, but we're more than that. You know, we we actually have a belief. All anarchists uh, are political atheists, but not all. Wait, no, all anarchists are political atheists, but not all political atheists are anarchists. That's, that's the Venn it. intersection that would, there. That would be it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's another word somebody brought up, and I've tried to use this before, but somebody said it pretty concisely on Facebook the other day. Uh, and after the fact, like it was after I wrote my blog post about how we should be conscientious objectors uh, to the state like rather that. than secessionist. But um, why didn't I say abolitionist? Because <laughs> somebody brought that up, and I've brought that up before. That's but good. I think I think abolitionist is really good, and the way we're you said it was political abolitionists. Should we say that? Should we try that even, one on for a week? You don't even have to say political. You just say we're just abolitionist. abolitionists. I like well, that and the way the guy way. put it is is um, you know if you don't control one hundred percent of the fruits of your labor, you don't control one hundred percent of the income. If you don't make the decision on where that goes, then you're you're some form of a slave because you don't own everything you produce. Uh, the government has a hand on it um so to be an abolitionist you disagree with that fact you say well hey that's not right that i, I like don't, that i don't control 100 percent of my income i like that and i i like the taking the adjective off it and just having it be abolitionist in the same way yeah. that i've met a few gun rights people who call themselves who say you know people are like what do you do what do you what's your political beliefs belief, political beliefs they're like oh i fight for civil rights they don't ah, say I fight for yeah. gun civil rights, and it's a real mind twist to people of like right. guns are right. a civil right, but they are in the same way right. that you know anything else think, is. I think that would have been perfect for that little secession pseudo debate uh, society was having after Barack Obama's election. Was people like ah, you're just racist Republicans who hate a, to have a black man as president? Uh, no, we're uh, you can be an abolitionist, right? You, you can hate having any president and be an abolitionist because you hate the fact that uh, that the executive branch, the U.S. state in general, steals uh, a portion of, of your money. Um, yeah, and they're warmongers and they're, they're using it for that. And I'm really, really against that. And that's been the one political consistency in my life is being anti-war since I was yeah, like five, like, you know, yeah. 43 years ago during the Vietnam yeah. War. And, you know, Muhammad Ali was a conscientious objector to the war yeah. on religious grounds because he was a he was an is he was Muhammad he he he, he was Muhammad Muhammad. he was not Muhammad he was <laughs> Islamic, uh, but you know his his famous quote I'm paraphrasing but it's something like I ain't got no beef with the Viet Cong, and yeah. you know I don't got no beef with the Middle East and speaking of which well who was it that said like uh, no Viet Cong ever called me nigga like was that just a, a thing that the Black Panther Ooh, said like or was that, that a Muhammad Ali I like thing? That. 
Because, I mean, it was at the same time as the Civil Rights Movement, and, you know, uh, black people were drafted. They were drafted like, like anybody else in, in America. They were forced. Uh, yeah. and, and, and to be a, to be a black person and be draft, drafted, which the draft's basically another form of slavery. I mean, that's just got to be slavery. awful. That was oh, Muhammad yeah. Ali, and it was the line right after what I said. He said, I ain't got no quarrel with them Vietnam. No Viet Cong never call, ever called me nigger. Yep. Mm-hmm. Should I play that? I can probably pull it up, but if you if you can play it, yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it because he had a way. Of, he had a way with words, man. Yeah, he, was good with he floated like a butterfly, and he rapped basically and stung like a bee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Here we go. Just to get one black man in service, you didn't have to say one thing in this country, and you could be back in boxing tomorrow. Yes, but uh, I don't know. I don't think I'd have to say that. Uh, uh, many reasons could probably uh, get me back. Uh, this thing's 20 minutes long. I'm not going to look for that uh, quote, but it's in this. It's in this. Okay. Okay. So speaking of Islam, um, you know, and, and of beefs, uh, ah, the I, re debate. I recently helped fight one of your beefs, and it wasn't really like I helped you fight your beef, but you came up with an idea. As you often do, you came up with an idea, and then I did dozens of hours of work making it happen, like with the blog, <laughs> and I'm still doing that with the blog. I'm still teaching new bloggers how to write a complete sentence um, and how to use WordPress. So... Uh, Speaking of, and I'm not saying anything bad about the bloggers. Some of them are great. Some of them are good. We don't get anybody on there who's not at least a diamond in the rough and has something to say. But a lot of people, even if they can form a complete sentence, can't form, you know, don't have experience writing a paragraph and making it work and don't know how to use hyphens and don't know how to use apostrophes. And so I have to play English teacher a lot. But anyway. Teaching um, hospital, baby. Teaching yeah, hospital. Yeah. So uh, Will Coley, the Freedom Fiend senior Islamic correspondent. You like that? Yeah, I like Come that on, man. A it's a daily show thing. <laughs> Laugh. That's great. Uh, Will Coley, the Freedom Fiend senior Islamic correspondent, recently had a debate, which I set up and moderated with a guy named Jack Berkman. Now, what's not mentioned in the debate, and it's on the Freedom Fiend, it's on the Anarchy Gumbo. I'll link it, and it's quite popular. Um, what? It, talk a little about how that came to be, and then I'm going to talk about what you probably don't even know about about me dealing with setting it up. And uh, well. well I listened to about the first 20 minutes of it, and I, I haven't had time to listen to any podcast since I stopped listening to that because I've had car troubles, and, and wife was sick too. So um, my car and my wife were both in ailments, and I've been dealing with that this weekend. Um, one of the things that, that I noticed from the beginning, though, is, is Jack doesn't seem to realize what precipitated the need for the debate or the desire on my part to push the debate, which was a video he did where he basically calls all no, Muslim he actually savages. Read, he actually read the text of that at some did point he? in the yeah. Did he? Okay, because at first he seems to he, to point to some radio show he has where I guess he says that same thing all the well, time. Well, that's what it was. No, he, he said it was a video of me reading the text that I read on my radio show uh, and let me read it, and then he read it. So he did address uh, the original okay. beef. Okay, good, good. Um, Basically, he called all Muslim savages, and at the end of the video, he said, and I will debate anyone, anywhere, anytime on this topic. So you and Will. Well, well, and then he said, and I'll rest my case or I'll rest my point on the fact that they cover their faces. Yeah, well, he didn't rest his point. I mean, he that he was his single it. issue and he had it wrong, too. I mean, a lot of it, you know, at some point in the debate. I did very little moderating on this. I, yeah. you know, a couple times I was like, okay, you're talking, you know, you're talking, Jack, you're talking over Will. I can only hear every third word you're saying. Let me say, you talk now, you talk now, you talk now. And then he ignored that. But um, he did come across as a bit ignorant because, um, and I guess not a lot of people know this. I knew it, but uh, I guess I'm a little bit closer to that part of the world than others. Um, but he was conflating the, f the full face cover. Yeah, with with just the hair cover, which, which I like called job. him on at some point. I was like, "Look, gentlemen, let's define terms here, Jack. Which are you talking about?" And he was like, "It he doesn't like, matter, or and, I don't care." And you, yeah. you know, and anyway, I'm not going to go into the whole debate, but he, um, he was pretty specious, I thought, with his debate techniques, and wasn't yeah. good at it at all. And no. the real telling thing is, it was supposed to be an hour long debate. And after about 35 or 40 minutes, he said, well, gentlemen, it's been good, but uh, my football game's coming on here. I'm going to see I'll see. And he left. So he basically literally uh -huh. was losing the ball game, and he's the kid who took his ball and went home. Yeah. yeah. To see a ball game, to watch someone else do a ball game. So, yeah. uh, so there, man. 
Wow. Yeah, I, I really need to listen to the end of that. Um, th- I guess technical news you could use notes would be, though, that uh, Skype three-way apparently isn't the best for uh, maybe in the future because the, the problem seemed to be Jack was always trying to cut Will off. And it's like the like, thing we'll is, it's talking. not it's not uh, duplex. It's single. Sing- right. OK, basically, right. like Mumble is duplex. Like you and I are talking over each other. Talk over me a little bit here and blah, blah, show that blah, people blah, can blah, still blah, hear blah, both blah, of, blah, blah, both of what both we're of saying. Us. Right. Yeah. It sounded like blah, 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 Islamic there for a second. But um, blah, 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 blah. so Only when um, we do that. I loved it when Will would say long Islamic names and concepts in that. I could just picture Jack Berkman like bristling, <laughs> steaming at the ears. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, he's really bad technologically. Like he had to have his wife help set up the Skype and turn off the video to make the audio better. And, uh, but he was really, he was like the worst person I've ever dealt with as far as setting up an interview. First of all, he never answered it, almost never answered an email in less than one or two days. I mean, we've been working on this for a month. And he originally said, I've never heard of your podcast. I'm not going to do it on there. You know, find me a real venue and I'll do it. Now, this is kind of funny coming from a guy who has like eight subscribers on YouTube and like, I mean, made one of the most incendiary videos I've ever seen on YouTube and yeah. had and like had only 70 like seven views. views. Yeah. Uh, 70 at one point, okay. but, and now it's got 125 because we linked it and people are going to look right. at it and it's going up. But you know, a guy who basically has no audience on the internet, he may have a radio show, but uh, he has no audience on the internet saying, this isn't enough of an audience. And I'm like, look, we got a few thousand listeners. We put it on BitTorrent. We put it on YouTube. And that's not the point. The point is you said anyone, anywhere, anytime. And he's like, nope, mm-hmm. don't want to do it. Three weeks later, he writes me back and says, okay, blue. let's let's do it. Yeah. So yeah. I set it up and you know, I'm like, okay, when can you do it? Here's, here's when Will can do it. When can you do it? And he's like, you know, it took a few days to get back. And finally, like, you know, I wanted to book it like a week in advance or something. And finally, like Friday, he's like, well, I can do it Sunday at this time. So Will, Will could do it. So then I'm like, okay, I need your Skype ID so I can add you because I have to have you added before I can do a three-way call. I wanted to get it done and set. And like Saturday night, he sends me his, his Skype ID. I try to add it and it's like, he's a, he's a guy living in DC and it was like some woman's name in some other state. And I'm like, <laughs> this is wife Skype. And I'm like, did you, <laughs> did you do something wrong? Did you type the wrong thing? And then the next day, like two hours before the interview or four hours before the interview, he's like, no, that's my wife Skype. That's what I'm using. First of wow. all, I really have an issue with people that share a Skype address or an email address or a phone yeah. number. I hate yeah. doing business with anybody where I don't know who's, it's not that I care if their wife reads it. I assume, you know, a good couple lets you, you know, there's nothing I hide from my wife. Like I tell, mm-hmm. I tell her about stuff all the time, but she's right. too busy to read my email. I'm too busy to read hers. It's insane. It's not, not insane. It's really bad business practice to share an internet account or phone mm-hmm. number with a, with a spouse. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Which, which hasn't the guy been like featured as uh, an anti-Muslim opinion on like Fox News and stuff? Before? Yeah, why is he? Why is he? Why is he got to use his wife stuff? Maybe she's. Know. Maybe she's wearing the pants. I don't know. Well, I don't want to get if, into if he lives in DC, he probably just goes into you know a studio that's set up just for that, just for picking up firebrands from think yeah. tanks and, and interviewing them. You know, I saw his wife for a second. She helped him turn off the video on it, and. She looked Middle Eastern to me. I don't know. She could have been from <laughs> India. I don't know. But And who knows? Uh-huh. And I'm not going to diss anyone's spouse. But I'm just saying, like, I saw her for three seconds, and she looked Middle Eastern to me. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe maybe she's Middle Eastern. And I, I don't know. I don't want to sound like I'm bashing anyone. I'm not bashing anyone. I, I will talk about him only. Uh, yeah. You know, And her name looked Middle Eastern to me, but I'm not going to even go there. So, okay. uh, yeah. So our senior, <laughs> our senior Islamic correspondent, Will Coley, mopped the floor with this guy. Will just kept talking about logical things. You know, like basically the guy's whole thing was based on a false premise. You know, he's like, uh-huh. the, he's like, there are half a billion people in half a billion Islamic women in the world that are forced to cover their mouths with veils, and and Will's like, no, they're not. The only country that forces that by law is Saudi Arabia, and and. He's like, well, okay, that may be so, but you know, why won't you stand with me, Will, in condemning this practice? And I'm like, and Will's like, I can, I will stand with you in condemning Saudi Arabia. The whole existence of that country is immoral. The existence of it violates the Quran. The name of it violates the Quran. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, going yeah. on and on and on and on about it. And, and then, and then call 
out that the, the reason all these dictators are in, in the Muslim world are so evil is because we America back, props, the US them, props up. them up. And yeah. then he's like, and then he's like, well, I don't really want to talk about politics. That's not what ah. I'm here for. Basically, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to discuss your logical premise about this. I want to mm -hmm. just quit. Mm -hmm. I just want to keep repeating the same misunderstandings. Right. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's it's a fun listen. Um, but going forward, maybe we need to have rules when we do Skype interviews that one person gets to talk at a time. Uh, and I don't know. I don't know. Sanction was, the other person. Because when, when Jack would try to interrupt, and it was usually Jack trying to interrupt, you'd hear these little mumbles or bits of Jack whenever Will would pause. Yeah, it, was, it sounded it was, like, you know, a machine gun mixed with a voice down a well. <laughs> yeah. So, uh yeah, and there's no editing at all in that. I didn't cut anything out except about a minute of sound testing before we started. And it, at one point, Will started to get an echo on his end, and Jack could ah. hear it too. And ah. so I, I kept recording, but I cut that part out. So the only thing that's cut out is audio testing and audio problems. It's exactly as it happened otherwise. So check it out, y'all. Let's, yeah, uh, let's go sell some stuff. All right. More arms. Like listening to the Freedom Fiends, but want them to listen to you? Contact the Fiends at talkback at freedomfiends.com. That's talkback at freedomfiends.com. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and lead the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says Buttons. And we'll talk about Muhammad Ali. You know, in the uh, the show notes for the Will Coley versus Jack Klugman, I mean Jack Berkman debate, I used a picture. I I grabbed some generic fight poster picture. I just searched yeah, fight po that. fight poster, <laughs> and I like blacked out their eyes. And uh, I was thinking yeah. later, like, shouldn't I have used a Muhammad Ali fight poster? But nah, because everyone knows who he is, and that has too many weird connotations, and I'd probably get sued. So I just used a generic <laughs> one. Yeah, it worked. It worked. What you did. But work. it said, but it said like Muslim versus anti-Muslim debate tonight, and it shows two shirtless guys with tattoos about to punch each other with boxing gloves on. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because I didn't really think about this, but. You know, if Muslim versus anti-Muslim, you'd think like the Muslim's the one on the left because he's mentioned first. The Muslim one is really like kind of uh, cut and cool and buff looking and skinny and like wiry. And the one on the right looks kind of schlubby. <laughs> <laughs> that was not intentional, but it worked out good. So. Nice, nice. Uh, so, yeah, I, I guess, do you think Jack Berkman, what do you think you'd think about the nudist in San Francisco? <laughs> what do you think they're savage I don't know. They don't wear anything or what? I don't. I don't know that he was like... I don't know that he's a straight up conservative. I don't know anything about his opinions other than than this. And he was really polite to me. I mean, the whole time uh, dealing back and forth. And when we got on the Skype, you know, he's really polite with me. He looks like Rob Lowe in uh, yeah. in oh, you saw a video of him. He looks like Rob Lowe in in yeah. uh, Arrest or um, Parks and Rec. No, no, no. Rob Rob Lowe is way better looking. Yeah, but they could be in the same lineup. Mm, if someone saw maybe. them, in a dark, if it was in a dark alley, whatever was committed. If, if Rob Lowe was hungover, ah. maybe. <laughs> okay, the guy's a lawyer, man. He's going to sue you. No, nah, I don't. I mean, I don't. That's not that, slander. You're not saying anyone's a drunk, Rob Lowe or Jack Berkman. You're saying he look. you think he looks like Rob Lowe hungover. 
Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying they could be in the same lineup if that were the if case. If that were the case, okay. In, in, in a fictional book I'm writing about Rob Lowe and Jack Berkman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, In okay, in Hollywood, Rob Lowe would play Jack Berkman in the Jack Berkman story. Ah, there you go. Okay. In, okay. in our budgets, with the way you and I make movies, Jack Berkman would play Rob Lowe. <laughs> How's that? Right, right. Okay. Well, I'll accept. I'll accept yeah. your premise. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, the other thing about the Berkman debate was, um, and I, I feel like a, this is a problem with a lot of status. It didn't seem, really seem like he understood force. Like I feel like Will was trying to point to the fact that uh, that Saudi Arabia forces these people, but it's the state apparatus, not a religious institution. It's the state apparatus that applies the force. And and Berkman was like, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter uh, who who applies the force. You know, if it's cultural, societal, <laughs> uh, governmental, doesn't matter. Um, but I feel like if it's cultural, it's not really force. It's a suggestion. Um, uh, same thing if it's religious. Uh, if you want to be a good little member of your religion, you follow as as loosely or as closely based on on how well you want to be perceived as being devout. Right? You you can have really orthodox religious people uh, who who like do things like people put, did two thousand years ago, and and today put the veil on the statue of uh, of, <laughs> of Vic, Queen Victoria in right. Yemen. Right, right, and, and I, I thought it was genius of Will, Will Coley, you know, the opposing force, to point out that uh, you have Orthodox Jews that that uh, you know have the curly little sideburns, and, and you know, Will Will is seems very devout and very traditional in his practice of his religion, and we've seen a picture of him and his wife. She is wearing a head covering but her face is not covered right that's the new job and that that's so much more common and she's the, from the middle east i don't right. remember what country but you know right. The uh, thing, the thing that Berkman seem his misconception seemed to be that that people are forced mostly to wear, I guess, what Will called the niqab, uh, which is the full face, and and you see that in some countries, but I think that I'm pretty sure that predates Islam. Like I think that was a Bedouin thing, um, or some kind of nomadic tribesman thing where women could wear that whole thing, uh, and I don't know how it evolved. Maybe it was just to keep dust off of your women because yeah. you didn't want your women <laughs> to get dirty. Dust off your women. <laughs> so, don't want women being dusty. It's the, it's the dust cover, like people used to put, you know. Over <laughs> their their record players um but that i'm pretty sure that predates islam um, i learned something i didn't know in this debate uh you know when when jack was saying why won't you stand with me will and do this and this and this and will was like yeah i'll stand with you i will condemn saudi arabia for their barbaric practices mm -hmm. and and he said i will stand with you to to call for more strong islamic women and he talked about the story of I don't know who the woman was in history, but right who threw, who threw the, the shoe, shoe yeah <laughs> at the leader, and you know that's where that's why throwing a shoe at someone is such a bad thing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or a good thing. But um, he was saying that that was one of his heroines, hero heroines, you know, right, right, right. Um, yeah, a good point too. That yeah, I mean that's sort of how. Uh, things like religion or philosophy or societies, that's how they advance is by people advancing the causes and people doing work on it. And then you have a, a tradition of that. Um, it was, I thought it was also excellent for Will to point out that, that women in America and in Western societies didn't always have the amount of rights they have now. They had to fight for it. Uh, there were strong women who stood up and, and, and took this stand that Jack Berkman is supposedly saying that, that should happen. Um, and they had to fight against people. Uh, so and we all know that Wyoming not that we think voting is any great thing but I think if one kind of person can vote and the other can't it's a bad thing uh, I don't know that's even hard to debate but we, Wyoming was the first state to give women the vote and uh, which is why they call Wy Wyoming state motto or it's you know, the everybody's equal like a, a, equality, the equality state, state. which mm -hmm. is not true because you're not equal if you want to smoke dope here so uh, right. right yeah unfortunately yeah. yeah, but yeah, and we know that they just gave women the vote, so some of them would move here in the 1800s. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, a calculus all the, on their part. All those lonely gold miners needed some company, or at least some uh, rentable company. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um. So yeah, I think I'm done with uh, talking about the debate. There's there's lots of other great stuff, but it's best for you to hear it from Will himself because he is actually an expert on this um, and to hear you know Jack's uh, objections so that you can hear Will explaining them away uh, so I would definitely check that out if you haven't already yeah I'm eating a nanner 
a nanner. Oh, I hate it when people call it nanners. <laughs> it's a nanner. Banana. You're so uh, a banana. It's an important part of the NAS. Part of the f- important part of the fiends diet, and I've lost twenty one pounds on the fiends mm. diet, which is weird because I lost twenty in like seven weeks. But you know, month later, month and a half later after that, I've gone down as much as three pounds from that. And I've never gone, but I've I've stayed below twenty one pounds for my original weight, and I look good, man. I look better than I did, nice, for sure. Nice. Yeah. So well, go on the Fiends blog and search Fiends diet if you want to know how to. Uh, well, I can't give medical advice. How I lost that weight and mm-hmm. in eating yummy food nonstop. So yummy without yummy. exercising. <laughs> yes. Yes. So. Um, you also sent me another interesting article. Apparently, you've no, been tro- my, trolling. I want to tell you, my, my wife and I are joking, half joking about writing a diet book if we both lose a bunch more weight. Because <clears throat> um, she's coming up with some some great, uh, you know, recipes, recipes and stuff, mm-hmm. and variations on re- other recipes. We're thinking of calling it the Real Anarchist Cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> and searching, you know, and inserting That's some genius. like non libertarian yeah. you know, some non libertarian, some non aggression principle stuff in there. Yeah. yeah. The real yeah. anarchist cookbook. That's genius. if you don't if you it don't know sell. The, definitely. The Anarchist Cookbook is the name of a book written in the sixties, which is like almost literally banned in America. Like if you order this book, the police will probably show up at your house or at least put you on a list, like before they even kept lists and before they had an internet. Uh it's basically a book on how to make bombs and drugs and <laughs> use guns. I've never right. even – I've seen a copy of it at a gun show actually on the table, and I was like, whoa. Nice. I picked it up and thumbed nice. through it. But uh, And the lady selling it with a bunch of other books and Boston Tea Party books and books on how to dispose of bodies and things like that. Was she the um, regional quilting champion for she, Northeast she looked, Wyoming? She really looked like she would, man. <laughs> she looked like – she was about 60 and sassy and looked like – the last person in the world you'd see selling books like that. And it was really, it made me smile, man. <laughs> nice, nice. That is one of the great things about Wyoming is all these old square people who, uh, a lot of them get freedom. They understand it. And that's, that's well, good. Or at least halfway get it. There was an article recently in the New York Times about Wyoming's changing demographic, voting wise. Uh-huh. And it was basically saying that. You know, Wyoming is freaked out that it's kind of the last bastion of the Republican Party, but it's, you know, it it's getting more Democrats and more like Republicans that are willing to steal all their money. Um, mm-hmm. And and it did say in the article, Wyoming has a strong libertarian leaning in its conservatives, which I'm yeah. glad they put, which is true. It mm-hmm. It's usually in the form of I don't trust the federal government, you know, and still voting, but. I'll take that over most places I've lived. Any, I'll take that over. Well, of course, Obama should be able to read your email. Without that, how will we be right. safe? You know, right, right. And yeah. give me a free. I got a free phone. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will take that over. Uh, you know, the the alternative as well. And by alternative, I mean there are, are quote unquote liberals or Democrats out there who'll be like, yeah, well, we we've got a lot in common. We're anti-war and this and that. And I'm like, well, the problem is. The things we have in common, I feel like, are just coincidental. Uh, I, I reject the premise that a government can do any good at all. Uh, I reject the premise that the government is anything but thieves and murderers or a gang of yeah. thieves writ large. So wh- wherever we have agreements like on war, possibly, um, or even corporate uh, welfare, wherever we have agreements, I feel like they're just coincidental. Here's a, here's a quick story about Wyoming and why it's different than California or anywhere else I've lived before. Um my wife went shopping one day without me. I usually go with her to Walmart, but she was mm-hmm. I was busy. I think I was pod, I think it was our first Sunday podcast or something. And she went um she went to Walmart and she was standing in line behind a young couple who were uh you know, they're probably 21, 22 and they had three children with them and the wife was pregnant and they were paying for their food and food stamps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Normally my wife wouldn't say anything but they were taking a really long time. They were holding up the line, Uh trying to figure out like, well, we can pay for this with food stamps and that. And my wife looked at them and said, if you can't feed them, don't breed them. (laughs) And the man in the couple got up in her face and started bitching at her and looked like he was going to hit her. And the man in line behind my wife, who she described him as a, you know, six foot four, 
60 or like 50 year old Wyoming cowboy, like wearing a cowboy hat, like literally like not dressing as a cowboy, but just came off the ranch into town, Mm -hmm. stepped between my wife and this angry welfare recipient and said, the lady's right. (laughs) Okay. If you tried, if my wife had said that same thing to anybody in any line in California, there would have been a crowd of people yelling at her. Mm-hmm. But in mm-hmm. Wyoming, the guy in line behind you who's an actual cowboy will stick up for a lady who's bitching yeah. about welfare, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that that's a really good it's – it's a true statement. I can't find any fault with it. You know, if you can't feed them, don't breed them. Um, but uh, it, it brings up something that's a bit more ambiguous, I think, in, in anarchist theory or libertarian theory as applied to, you know, current America. Um is it okay to take money from the government? Uh, well, if he's a wild rancher, takes so much that, from you. You know, likely that cowboy was taking some kind of money from the federal he, he, government he, if he's a rancher. Exactly. He he could get some kind of farm subsidy. Now, um, this article people uh, get uh, any uh, social vote. security. Yeah, and well, social security, I'm fine with people taking because they were forced at gunpoint to pay into it. I will likely take social security when I'm of age to take it. But I probably won't have any because I've worked self-employed my whole life and reported taxes. So like literally the last time I had to, by law at gunpoint, pay into Social Security was like 18 years ago. I haven't paid that much into it. So I won't get, I will, you know, if I get a Social Security check, it would be for like $4 a month or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, I will, I will fully co-sign my wife taking it because she's paid a lot into it every week for decades and decades and decades yeah that's not really welfare you know but but i mean the same thing is uh the market is so distorted which i think is part of the problem of having a government is how do you decide these kinds of things but um you could make the argument that the market is so distorted that i i spent so much more on my college education than i would have in a free society uh at least it seems that way um you regularly pay so much more for products uh both because of sales tax and also because the government taxes uh various parts of the production process the government extracts things so you're things saying that cost so much more so you're saying that that young couple with the three kids and one on the way had the right to go ahead and be on food stamps i don't know I, i'm saying I, i'm saying it's more i could see an argument i seems. could see an argument i could see an argument for it even uh i would say i like what my wife did i like what she did there and it was more i think it was more about they were taking up her effing time her blurging time <laughs> yeah, and yeah. stealing tax money if they were just stealing yeah. tax money and it was quick she wouldn't have got it in her face. <laughs> I think. I really do. Although she hates stealing, uh-huh. you know, she feels yeah. exactly like I do about everything now. Um, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, I mean, but the whole, the whole, uh, you know, there was that, that book written in the 60s about how to collapse the state for the left by uh-huh. getting everyone on welfare. What do they call mm-hmm. that? Piven and Clower? I don't remember the book, but uh, I, I know of that strategy. Howard and um, I mean, they say that Obama read that book as a kid and really liked it or as a younger. No, literally, <laughs> okay. like, you know, may have written a term paper on it that can't be found now. But uh, yeah. yeah, it was Cloward and Piven. It was two, you know, Jewish atheist intellectual old people in the 60s wrote a book for the young uh, liberals and minorities telling them you know here's what you do to fix america get everyone on welfare you can collapse the system and they'll Mm -hmm. reform it so it's more equally distributed yeah anti-state judo uh and there's history of that of using the system's own rules regulations and powers against itself uh like there was the guy the, the movement in the gulag in the soviet union um to where some somewhere in the rule book it said you know every complaint you make will need to be addressed in three days by this official um and so somebody got all the prisoners in the gulag to just write a complaint every day or every hour of every day uh and because it was required for them to respond to each of them with a certain manner of time and a certain way of responding um you know they they cost so much resources of the state um so that that strategy is is a thing you know wouldn't they just shoot you though in the gulag for that for i don't orga- know for I organizing mean, that that's that's the other thing is is when the state gets gets its own powers turned against them there's nothing to stop them from saying well screw this and just you know changing the rule or or i feel like the people i feel like what the strategy i feel like what they're doing now is changing the rules so rapidly that there's no way to deal with it without circumventing mm, yeah. it like you know i feel like 
every day for the past few years, I've woken up to a new tyranny that would have blown my mind 10 years ago. Yeah. Like if it yeah. happened once a year, mm-hmm. maybe I'm just paying more attention to politics now. Um, yeah, like, well, like, me, like, like the, you were, the reading your email thing. I mean, yeah, that I read was what it I was and it's just of. like, it's like, yeah, of course, of course that happened. Yeah. There's, there's no surprise at all. There's no like shock factor. Actually, like, I was oh, kind of like, I was kind of like, didn't this already happen? But <laughs> it already happened with the Patriot Act. But this, you know, that's been a big thing lately too, is like things that are already immoral in laws being codified to be more clear in new laws. Like the indefinite detention thing signed New Year's Eve was kind of already in the Patriot Act. Right, right. So was reading everyone's email without a um what this probably does is, well, is well, we'll also, give, also normalized, right? Like it's in the mainstream press. It's in CNN yeah. or, or Washington it's Post. It's not just and, in some and, internet and, press. Right. Thing, and you know. people and people don't rip the heads off the tyrants, so the tyrants are like, well, that's a mandate for us to keep doing. Yeah. Yep. So. Nanners. Nanners. Good in your mouth, huh? <laughs> Yeah. So there's a new podcast I want to do a shout out to Ed and Ethan. Right. Ed and Ethan? Okay. Ed okay. and Ethan.com. E D A N D E T H A N dot com. What do you it's like Cana- about it? It's Canadian. It's a Liberty cast. That's what you like about it? Is that a Canadian? Well, it's interesting because <laughs> most Liberty stuff uh that I listen to is American and it's from an American viewpoint. Like I was listening to them. This is kind of interesting and in screwing with my worldview. I was listening to them and they were like, um, I didn't know they were Canadian. They don't really sound Canadian. They don't say a or, you know, a boot much. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Really good audio, too, for a podcast. And they use yeah. condenser mic. So they know what they're doing and they're doing good audio. But yeah. uh, it's funny. It's good. It's lively. But for instance, they were saying, you know, uh, I started in the middle of a cast and there was he was like, hey, Ed, what's up, Ethan? Hey, did you know that the Supreme Court has passed a new law that and I can't remember what it was and. It was it was like or the Supreme Court has decided that, you know, they can now read your email and screw mm. you up the ass if they don't like what they read or something. It was <laughs> like I was like, really? Oh, my God. And then I realized they were talking about the Canadian Supreme Court, Ah, okay. you know, and it kind of messed with my <laughs> worldview of like America is everything and Americans tyranny is everything. So it's good for that. Yeah. And it's just good. It's a good, lively cast. I recommend it. OK, OK, OK. Cool. Yeah, I'll check it out. I mean, um, I think the last one that you recommended that I actually checked out was probably Bad Quaker, uh, Ben Stone. And awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm awesome. so glad you recommended that because that is probably my my favorite podcast. Who's not us or Scott Horton? Ben's gonna come visit me in the spring. Oh, really? Really? That will be awesome. Score. Score. Um, yeah. Is, is he is he still doing the road trip he planned with his yeah, uh, yeah. his camper? All right. Yeah. All right. He said he was gonna maybe go to the south. I should uh, see if he could come visit Austin. His, too. his camper van, his camper van, Beethoven. Camper van, oh yeah. Cool. Camper van Beethoven is a band that Dave Immergluck was in before he was in uh, Cracker. Mm, worms. Yeah. All Cracker. right. So let's go sell some stuff and then come back for the short roundup. Yep, yeah. Not so good. short. Not so short. All right. Worms. Worms. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is your property. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Adam Curry's No Agenda Global Radio, streaming live every Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. East Coast U.S. time. Listen live at nagradio.com. That's nagradio.com. Call in soon before they get droned. 
Love the fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help, but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of freedomfiends.com. You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon and IMDb. You can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available, and you can also comment on our site, or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiend's message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. So, Nima. Yeah. So, Thursday, since you have a family, um, you're going to be not <laughs> on the cast, but I'm doing a show on the curry cast same same bat channel with chandler filling in for you awesome man yep. awesome cool i think that'll be the first time chandler's co-hosted a, a fiends yeah and i like chandler he's smart he's got good audio set up and uh we were on his show one time and we, we, i didn't like it because he didn't moderate but i will be moderating the hell out of him so it'll work <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't moderate and he well, had like seven guests on that was my complaint. yeah that, that was the thing is there were seven people on and it was hard to moderate something like that although i, I still had a, a fun time but uh i'm not as cranky as you or at least i used you to are be. now i, I you might be now. now we'll see and i am you know it's it's totally bizarre world i mean this week you were like michael i can't believe you haven't seen that movie and you were beef beefing with people <laughs> it's right. usually i'm beefing right. with people and yeah yeah, I'm telling you, you haven't seen movies. Well, but. maybe it's a good thing. Maybe if fiends go into bizarro mode, the rest of the world will go back. <laughs> at least, at least we can hope. I'd be willing to make that sacrifice for the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice story, but I don't hear my name in it. You know, speaking of me, uh, Ian read. <laughs> Ian read my Ron Paul blog post on Free Talk Live like last nice. week. Nice. I didn't know that. Nice. Someone told me about it. Yeah, yeah, great. I didn't even so, send it to him. So. He must have just read it. Maybe, yeah. maybe Ian knows who we are and follows our blogs. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Ian's known who we are for a while, but I guess that was the, I'm the point of the joke. That I was the point Ian of on, the joke. I have Ian on speed dial, and I bug him all the time. Yeah. No, well, he, he used to call us in the early days of being on LRM. During the call show. Us be like, yeah. <laughs> He'd be like, hey, I just wanted to correct something you said. Oh, thanks, Ian. I know. <laughs> Or trying to make us more radio friendly, and we're like, uh, blur yeah. that, man. We're the fiends. Yeah. Don't you know who we are? <laughs> worms, worms. Um, so speaking of Michael Dean, um, good. You you're always making fun, or you're always making this joke of having uh, libertarian concentrate reeducation indoctrination yeah. camps, and uh, reason apparently <laughs> wrote did an, an article, article about libertarian dictatorships. Which um, the the thing about the the anarchist versus minarchist political uh, thing in New Hampshire was also from Reason. Have you been visiting Reason more than usual lately, or are they up? No, I don't pay I, attention I to tell. Reason because uh, they have never even mentioned us, including <laughs> including the Guns and Weed movie, which they really should have reviewed. So I don't yeah. even consider their existence, and I consider them beltway insider, half yeah. measure, bow tie, they are. voting, they're kind of, they're kind of voting minarchists. Blah yeah. blah woof woof. Although they've been doing it forever, and without them, it probably wouldn't have spread as far. So good for them. But someone, people send me stuff, and someone sent mm -hmm. me this based on my jokes about libertarian reindoctrination camps. So the yeah, was, yeah. I didn't read it. Was the premise of it basically we need a libertarian to force everyone to be? No, not at all. Not okay. at all. Uh, in fact, the the headline, including the subtitle, is the mad dream of libertarian dictatorship, the long lived, utterly insane idea of an autocrat imposing uh, freedom. Uh, and I thought it brought up some good ideas. And is it about points. Ron Paul? No, not at all. <laughs> uh, it's actually about um, different. Uh, they use the term classical liberal in, in that tradition because it's a lot more historical uh, than current event based. Um, but they go on to cite a few people who were 
classical liberal writers who actually did both theorize about something like this, a liberal dictator, you know, liberal, not like Obama liberal, but liberal, like freedom oriented, um, including F.A. Hayek, who apparently had some decent things to say at one point about uh, General Augusto Pinochet, the dictator of, uh, yeah. of Chile. Yeah. Um, and and apparently Hayek also made some uh, a statement to the effect of you know if we could have something like a liberal dictator for a brief period you know that might work. Um, she goes on to say that though that Hayek you know kind of backed away from that and and maybe wasn't too serious when he said it. Um, and and the the tone of the article is definitely that uh, uh yeah it's a ridiculous idea because even if you did have a dictator that was um. That that felt the way you and I did. Say you have Ron Paul, you, you make him the dictator. Um, you still have the apparatus of the state. So uh, his successor could could be you know uh, a tyrant, or somebody could have a coup and be like, well, f all this freedom. We already have a dictatorship, and just kill the guy and take over the dictatorship. Um, and then, I mean, can you really have? freedom if you have one person opposing it then it's not true freedom right well i mean i would say that's what trying to make ron paul president was and a couple thoughts i have one is um you know in some like people say things like the small like stefan molyneux is fond of saying and you repeat a lot that the smaller a government starts out the bigger it ends up and i'm like well i haven't mm -hmm. really seen that yet but i'm also thinking about uh you haven't what about america yeah yeah <laughs> america. well the thing I mean, is that, that's the thing is you know you there's little like bits of less restrictive nooses and collars here and there like the pot decriminalization thing and the uh, uh -huh. we can still own guns and we can still click like on something on facebook without getting jailed like they do jail people in india for that you can't even get on facebook in china but if you mention the word tibet on, on the internet in china they'll come take you away and question you uh -huh. and beat you and maybe jail you and maybe kill you um so, but I'm actually thinking about like in, <clears throat> in some of those really repressive countries, there's more freedom in a way in some things because they, they're so rigid about their enforcement that they can't deal with it. Like for one, for one instance, my friend lives in China. He grew up in America. He married, I went to college with, I went to college with him. He married a Chinese woman and lives over there. And he said like, you know, the, pot is a really serious crime there like they will throw you in prison for it it's worse than here and mm -hmm. but he has smoked a joint in front of a cop and the cop had no idea what it was mm -hmm. and that's not he, uncommon he, there he thought it was hot fruit flavored tobacco yeah yeah and in <laughs> in uh in v i have a friend that lives in vietnam who and a british woman i don't know why she lives in, in these people live in these places but uh probably for love <clears throat> in vietnam they will put you on the firing squad for possession of one bullet ironically mm. but <laughs> gay people can live together as husband and wife because there's no state marriage there and if you want to start mm. i mean they really look down on it but it's not Ill, you know basically gays would have the same rights as straight people right. for marriage because lady to, boys belong in in bangkok not yeah, in the kitchen yeah yeah <laughs> and uh you know if you want to start a business there you just start a business there's like no paperwork there's no you just hang a shingle out in front of your house or your hut yeah. um yeah. you know if you if you want to like uh adopt somebody they just come live with you. There's no paperwork. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if the neighbors, if the neighbors are murdered by the police or, or a tornado, uh, the kid will just come live with relatives or friends that will raise them. And that's it. That's like, okay, now you're yeah. my family. You know, there's yeah. no paperwork. Yeah. Well, I think some of that is, um, when you have a democracy, a modern democracy, you feel like you, you're under this illusion that people self-determine the government. You're under this illusion that the government is just us. We are the state. And so because we are the state, we can delegate control over our own lives to the state. So I feel like the state is much more repressive in a broader spectrum. You know, they they, they consider it's on everything its way. the realm yeah. of the state. Yeah. And – it will not, you know, if it gets more tyrannical here, like it looks like it's going to every time I open the internet and read my email or <laughs> stuff people send me or headlines. Um, when stuff's outlawed here, it's not going to be like in China where the cops won't know what it is, you know, and yeah. it's not going to be, it's not going to be, uh, you can just start a business and compete, you know, because, because like it that. came it's from like a small government, because it came from a small government and grew exponentially, 
it has the first world, pro- you know, the first world problems and the first world like law enforcement and government solutions to dealing with what the government, mm-hmm. you know, they mm-hmm. consider problems. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, that that's sort of the Mol- Molyneux line of reasoning is the reason that happens is because at first you have small government, you have a freer market, which means you have more money, you're more prosperous. So then because of that, the government has more, uh, they've got fatter tax livestock, right? So they can get more yeah. powerful. Yeah. Um, whereas if you, you just sort of have this pretty powerful government the whole time, things stagnate. So if you start with the bigger government, right. you, have, you have a stagnant economy and eventually it just dissolves and then you start over again with the new tyrant. Um, whereas, yeah, if it's if it's free or market, you have a bigger economy and then you have a bigger government and you get to the point where you're like, you're like America now, which is vastly more powerful um, in terms of, of resources and the ability to deal death than any other authoritarian regime ever in the history of the world, I would argue at least. I mean... Yeah, I guess the Soviet Union probably killed more of their own people, but um, they had they had less of a technology technological ability to do that. It's probably easier to escape, you know, than it would be to uh, be on the kill list of Obama and escape from a Hellfire missile fired by a drone. Yeah, I mean, think about that. Like, you know, the the uprising in the ghetto in World War Two. Is that what you're talking about? I was spacing out. <laughs> uh, oh well, yeah. There's that too, but no, that that's Germany. But yeah, um, I mean that's an fact, example. That's, like that wouldn't be possible, right? If there's FEMA camps on every corner, like there's going to be in a few years here, if Obama. And you know, this is kind of interesting. The well, let's let's clar- clarify that they, that was told in that book you sent me, Unintended Consequences. Uh, the Warsaw saw ghetto, right? Um, the 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 people. There were resistors, right? They, they got the idea that, okay, well, we're next. They're going to kill all of us. Let's at least try to put up a fight. And it was something like 20 or 30 people. Um, they killed a few Germans, got a hold of their weapons, their guns. Uh, not even some, some of them were like Polish people that were kind of like mercenaries, killed them because they were easier to kill. Uh, and, and basically held off the whole German war machine for like a month. Uh, or, or was it like a month and a half? Some, some long amount of time. Um, you know, they lost because obviously, but, uh, but they had a good go of it, and and you're saying, I guess, is <laughs> when you have the idea of a drone like you do now, I don't know if that's as possible as it used to be. Yeah. You know, something I think about, this is kind of an unrelated, but it it's kind of related in a way. I was thinking about the difference between, you know, let's get back to the anarchist versus other terms for anarchist thing. You know, a reason... I want to use a word other than anarchist is not politically correctizing it. It's not like NRA types who say you should never say weapon, say firearm. They're trying to soften it. I'm trying to clarify mm-hmm. it. I want to clarify yeah. it yeah. Uh, because the word anarchist has, I mean, it is what it is. We want no government, but first of all, it's so tainted by the media intentionally to, to where they say, if you don't want a government, you either want chaos in the streets and children being murdered and starving, or you want to blow shit up, which we don't want either mm-hmm. of those things. Mm-hmm. We want peaceful free market things that, it, that would replace the government. Um, yeah. The second thing is the word anarchist, you need it. You really need, uh, or it's, you need, you really need an adjective in front of it. You know, anarcho capitalist, you need, you can't, if you just say anarchist, anyone who knows, anything beyond the government line of you're violent and want chaos. Uh, people think you're a socialist or a leftist or a Marxist or an anarch. you know, I mean, Marx was pretty much an anarchist almost. I mean, that's what he wanted was a stateless society where the workers had their own voluntary mm-hmm. interactions as, as how to organize society. And, you know, Lenin and then later Stalin took that, had a revolution with it, and once the revolution was over, said, okay, now we're in charge. Let's not yeah. do that other thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seems so when like you a say, good idea until I'm the tyrant. Yeah. See the movie Animal Farm for more on that. But uh, Or read the book. Yeah, so I want... I'm still looking after two years of us doing this podcast almost. I'm still looking for well, well, a in, term. Well, in my... In my discussion that was heated but actually got really calm after I calmed myself down, uh, I sort of wrote a mini treatise about it, uh, trying to address... Treatise. His, <laughs> treatise. Treatise, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, tried to address his misconceptions, and one of those misconceptions was he was like, 
he thought it was inconsistent. He was like, well, you know, you're you're against all this theft and murder, but you're for anarcho-capitalism, so you're for the idea of trusting everybody to not be thieves and murderers, and, and which means you're thinking it's okay if somebody does thieve and murder. And I'm like, no, no, you're completely missing the point. Uh, anarcho-capitalist, or, or I guess whatever we are, blank term, uh, we, you and I, the fiends, we don't say... Um, what, what, what we're really doing is we're just calling out bad things when they happen. We're not saying bad things won't happen. We just refuse to say, well, if a cop does a bad thing, it's not a bad thing. Well, if a, if a person in the army does a bad thing, it's not a bad thing. If a well, politician the next, does a bad thing, it's not a bad thing. The next logical thing for that guy to complain to you about, and he probably did this, was would be to say, well, all your, you're all problem. You have no solution. So? To which we say, you know, that's like telling someone in 1850 who would pick the cotton. If you can't tell me how the cotton's going to get picked without slaves, we're not ending slavery. Right, right. Uh, you have to have everybody agree on the problem. Since it's a societal thing, I don't know if you have to have everybody agree on the problem. But the first step is to uh, is to diagnose what the problem actually is, right? Yeah, like I in mean, AA. Why the first throw, thing why you throw have cures to at something if you don't know what the, the disease is? You have to admit you're an alcoholic before you can get any help, you know? Right, right. And statism and so I think that's is all like we're trying to do. Is, is, yeah, we're trying to point out to statists that the, the we're problem is... We're admitting that they're alcoholics, though. That's different than in AA. You do it yourself in AA, yeah. but... Well, uh, to well, me, the key, the key word is legitimate, right? We're admitting, this is, we're admitting the society that we are forced to be a part of is sick. Right. So we are admitting yes. it has we have a problem because we're part of it. You know, yeah. I voted for a long time. I'm part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah, but um, I, I think the thing is legitimacy, right? I mean, uh, statists think that certain times when you acquire money through somebody involuntarily certain times it's legitimate and usually those times are when it's done by somebody who was appointed to a position called tax collector or IRS agent or police officer or whatever they think that that makes it legitimate um, you know anarchists or whatever we are say that no you don't you don't have a veil of legitimacy for things that's that's not possible you can't say that because somebody has a title that legitimizes their bad actions actions bad actions are bad actions no matter who does them cool i think we're um pretty close to our, our time here i have a name I, i've come up with a name let's let's try this on on the fiends listeners on, on the fiends small f fiends for a while uh instead of anarchist instead of anarcho-capitalist instead of libertarian instead of whatever you want to call it how about calling them fiends <laughs> Freedom fiends. I like, don't what think do you, that'll catch on, but I think it uh, should. I think we should try it out and see what our <laughs> listeners think. You know, what's your politics? I'm a freedom fiend. Mm, yeah, freedom fiend. I might be onto something there. And fiend, I think I'm, fiend, fiend by itself because it's already so. Uh, I'm, oh, so you like to smoke crack? Uh, kind of a thing, you know. Uh, freedom fiend. No, but gotta, I think people should be able first. to. <laughs> yeah, and I think I want to call this episode uh, Defeen, D I E F E E N, uh, Die Fiend, yes. which is actually Defeen, meaning the fairies, is the name of uh, a Wagner opera. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it'll be good for your SEO. People will search it. Because <laughs> <So, laughs> people it are won't always searching be, how to kill us. It won't, just be, it won't just be young hipsters listening to us. Some opera fans will find the fiends oh, and find liberty it. through us. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully. And we did talk about it, so it's not specious putting it in the title. Yeah. 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 All right, man. Worms and peace right. and such and fiends. Cool. Worms. Yeah. Hello, Freedom Fiends. It's your boy, Dean, from the U.S. Get the U.S. out of the screen. The Freedom Fiends podcast is covered by a Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 license. Do what you want with it and spread it around. Tell two friends. Make copies. Email it to everyone you know. Go on the site and comment. This is a conversation. Every week, we'll have an exciting new episode where Michael W. Dean and Nima Vadadi weave their own unique take on the way the world works and how to find your place in it. Available from freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com, the Liberty Radio Network, and No Agenda Global Radio. Subscribe and tell two friends. And remember... The only power they have is the power you allow them. We're not saying the freedom fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one.
If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money.